morning. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal, and you're watching the MEM Edge show. And this is the show where we put you in front of where the action is in the broader markets. And it's certainly quite a bit different as far as the opening today in the broader markets compared to a week ago. Uh, last Monday, it was certainly a very different scene. Uh, this week, things are looking quite a bit more up. So let's go ahead and get started review what we are going to be covering today. First of all, as usual, we will take a look at where the current markets are. And of course, as always, this is going to be critical for you as far as helping you formulate your plan, not only for this week, but potentially going out beyond that. You are going to want to have a solid sense of where the broader markets are. And then we are going to go ahead and carry on with part two of our series, How to Trade Volatility. I'll cover a little bit of what we did last week, but uh, today we are going to expand on that. And then from there, how to play uh, the current strength in defense-related stocks. We'll go ahead and get into that. And then lastly, wanted to remind you that next week we have a special guest that will be on the show. His name is Dave Landry. He has uh, he is world renowned. His expertise is swing trading. So super excited to get into that. Certainly given where we are with the continued volatility in the markets, we will get into this, but you will want to have generally speaking a shorter time trade horizon in mind. So certainly capitalizing on Dave's expertise in swing trading falls very much in line with what we have been or will be covering today. So let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do is go ahead and show you uh, certainly the broader markets and where we are. So let's get started with taking a look at the S&P 500. We're gonna be taking a look at a daily price chart here of the SPX. And what I've done per usual is gone ahead and each day here is one day of price activity, each bar. These simple moving averages have been overlaid on top of the price. So this green line is your 10 day simple moving average. The red is the 50 day simple moving average. Blue is your two a lot of relevance here among these simple moving averages and the price action relative to that. So I'm taking you back to uh, the beginning of this year when the markets were in a very confirmed uptrend. The uh, indices were finding support at upward trending 10-day simple moving averages. And first sign of distress is this break down below this 10-day simple moving average. Once it breaks the 50-day, that is much more concerning as far as the potential of a continuation of that downtrend. And then we can marry it with these other technical indicators. Up here, I have what's called the RSI. That's your relative strength indicator. And we want the relative strength indicator to not only be heading north, but above this net neutral 50. That's indicating a positive RSI. But if we go back to this break here in the beginning of May, indice breaks below the simple moving averages and the RSI trends negatively. That is a loss of upward momentum. It is not a good sign. Down here below, we have what are called stochastics. This is another momentum indicator. Same principle as far as direction of the stochastics, but also the position relative to this 50. That's the net neutral on stochastics. So we can see here again in the beginning of May, as the indice, the prices are falling below the indices, we're getting a negative RSI confirmed by a negative stochastics. So this is telling us that the markets are under pressure. And in fact, they did continue to decline further. This is taking us to last Monday when the markets broke down below this 200 day simple moving average, even more negative. So let's take a look at where we are now. Last week's action was really quite bullish. It brought us back up above these key simple moving averages. And you can go back historically, oftentimes when we are in really horrible periods in the market, this is last fall prior to the uh, bear market, we can see that these moving averages can act as resistance when these indices attempt 
to rally, but not so. Last week, we were able to break back up above. So this is really uh, quite bullish action. It it's indicating that the near-term downward pressure has been relieved, so to speak. Uh, it is bullish, so near-term, the prospects are quite promising for the broader markets. However, it does not mean that volatility is out of the way. We can see how these indices behaved into May. Uh, certainly now they are all cylinders going upward, but we are still very news sensitive, headline driven. Of course, today's rally on the news of a, a truce, if you will, with Mexico and the tariffs, the markets like it. We're still not out of the woods with other news as far as China related. So uh, there is still very much a sense that we could see continued volatility until that issue is re resolved. So that's what we are going to be getting into as far as how you can capitalize on that volatility that is being brought on by uncertainty. This type of back and fill is not, uh, it, it can be tricky to navigate. So we are gonna get into that. Uh, before we do that, what I wanted to do was go ahead and drill down further in the markets. We want to have a sense of where the broader markets are. But actually, before we get into that, I want to take us back to this presentation and we're going to get into volatility and you'll see the significance of not only having a strong sense of where the broader markets are you are going to have uh, want to have other information so that you can actively trade this volatility so let's talk about how you can successfully trade during these volatile markets again very headline news driven uh, the markets are up today. We don't know if Trump or if there's going to be any news perhaps over the next week relating to China that may put people on edge. But let's take a look uh, as far as how you can successfully trade. You do, as I said, want to have a strong sense of the direction of the markets. Uh, you want to have an exit plan in place. We can see how quickly the markets can move in either direction. And we did review that last week in, in quite detail. So for those of you that missed it, you can go to stockcharts.com and view prior shows. It's going to be last week. And we review in great detail how you know when it's time to exit that stock. That's going to be very critical. And then knowing where the strength is in the market. So we talked about the broader markets being in a healthy position right now. You will want to take that broad overview knowledge and be able to drill down. You want to know where the markets are outperforming because these are the areas that you are going to want to then uh, put together a list of stocks so that you can capitalize on that. So we'll get into that as far as where the strength is now and how you can uncover that. And then uh, using historical precedent to create your game plan. Quite simply, you want to look at the historical trading action in a given stock because in essence, you will want to have a stock, a list of stocks that you are familiar with. And uh, this is not something that's going to take a lot of time because you want to be able to capitalize on the current markets. But in essence, you want to get a sense of how a particular set of stocks that you are comfortable with, how do they trade? And I'll show you how we can do that as well, because there are going to be a certain type of uh, stocks that you are going to want to traffic in if you are being a bit more active, uh, swing trading, if you will, in this continued volatile market. So these are the areas. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to review very quickly what we looked at last week so that you can be in tune to how you can uh, capitalize on these markets. This is another item that I mentioned for those of you that do pre-market action. You want to get a sense of where the broader markets may or may not open. We're looking at the MCHI, which is China, the ETF, and that is in red here. And of course, the Chinese markets are open uh, well before they close at 3 a.m. Eastern time. So for those of you that are 
in the move and watching the markets before the open. Take a quick peek at how the Chinese markets have done. Oftentimes, what I'm trying to show you here is the correlation as to how the U.S. markets will tend to trade. It's not a given absolute every day, but it will certainly give you a sense of what to anticipate in the U.S. markets. And then also, I've overlaid the European market. This is using Vanguard VGK. It's the FTSE European market. And again, that's going to be in red relative to the S&P, which is in blue. Uh, Europe, their market closes. Um, they're not quite closed. They are still active during uh, the opening hours for the U.S. market. But certainly you can have a sense of how they are actively trading going into the U.S. open. Just uh, tools to help set the pace or the tone going into uh, the markets. And then w knowing when to cut your losses. I'm just going to show you this. But if, again, if you go back, take a look at last week's show, and I will go into great detail and also include it our examples. But in essence, you are going to want to use these uh, simple but powerful indicators. And we talked about them uh, N not quite yet, but the RSI, MACD, and those simple moving averages. You're going to want to pay attention to the action of your stock, utilizing these if they break below any of these key indicators, that will be your sign. Also, you're, you're going to want to use different time frames with your charts, and these same characteristics are going to be applicable across all timelines with your price charts. So again, uh, I urge you to take a minute, and you'll be about 10, 12 minutes in is when we start digging into knowing exactly when it's time to exit your stock, which is something really valuable that you'll want to know even outside of this exercise. So that's the first part. Let's go ahead back and I want to take us to, uh, we want to go back and capitalize on this new information. And as I stated, go ahead and begin by looking at where specifically the strength is currently in the broader markets so that you can then capitalize on that. So we're going to go ahead and do what I usually do. This is called candle glance view, a snapshot view of various indices, indexes. And this is something you can access from the first interface page on stockcharts.com. Initially, it is going to already be populated with different indices. You can go ahead and modify that. So what I've done here is I have the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow Jones, the Russell 2000, and then sector, uh, S&P sector charts, XLK is technology, healthcare. From there, what I've done is overlaid an indicator the RSI, I want to see where the relative strength is, sort that by descending, go ahead and update that. We want to see where the strength is. So we're going to be seeing strength up here on the upper left side down to weakness. And uh, the good news is the VIX is down here at the very bottom. The volatility is actually uh, surprisingly quite low. But let's take a look at where the strength is up here in the forefront. We can see gold. Gold has been uh, really on a bit of a tear, if you will, uh, flight safety and other reasons for these gold uh, stocks to be moving to the forefront here. And then from there, we get into uh, a defensive area. This is consumer staples. They were the best performer last week. A lot of this has to do with the weakening dollar and these multinational staples companies are uh, able to benefit from a lower dollar. But also there's a lot of growth prospects going on in here, a lot of turnaround stories in Staples. I'll show you in a bit how you can drill down and uncover precisely within Staples where the strength is. Uh, good news here, technology up here, up one and a half percent up here in the forefront as far as where the strength is. Not so much the case, certainly uh, last the beginning of last week, but uh, moving back to the forefront, and that is a good sign. We like to see technology showing strength and so, and so on. So here we are drilling down into those areas that are strong, but relatively are a little bit weaker. This is industrials, another 1% uh, rally. We can see that the industrials in this thumbnail are reversing this downtrend. That's another area that we're going to get into so that you can precisely uncover just where is the strength strength 
in these given indices. So let's go ahead and do just that. What I would like to do now that you have a broad overview of the markets, we are currently in a near-term bullish phase. You can now drill down, you know where the strength is within these broader markets. What I am going to do now is go ahead and take us to, uh, well, I don't wanna quite go there yet, but what I wanted to do is talk about ways that you can put a list together of stocks of candidates for you to get to know so that during this volatile period, you'll have a good sense of your given uh, list. So what I'm looking at here is what's called market movers. This is that first page of stockcharts.com. And what we can do is quite simply, we have the top 10 within the S&P 500. And I'm taking us here because when you are trading a bit more actively in a volatile market, you will want to look at highly liquid stocks. So I'm taking us to the S&P 500. You don't want to have these thin names that bounce around. And so upon looking at this list, we want to take a look at the most active and these most active, it does not, it's regardless of whether the stock is up or down, but most active. In other words, there's a lot of volume, a lot of liquidity, and oftentimes most, most active stocks are going to have news. There's a reason that they are up 4%, uh, Bank of America up 3%, and so on. Now, I will tell you, this is a list that I look at, certainly on a very regular basis. And uh, last Friday, at the close, when we looked at these most actives, uh, three, four, four of the stocks that are listed here today were there on Friday's most active list. Now I'm pointing that out to you because oftentimes when these stock hit these most active, it will be news related. It will not be a one-off. It will be a continuation, uh, certainly depending on the markets and what's driving it. So in fact, AMD was one of the names that was on the list last Friday, and it's up here again today, up another 4%. So we can take a look at that. Uh, but what I would like to do is go ahead and take a look at Microsoft. This is one of the names that was also on here as being the most active last Friday. So what I'm taking us through here now is in essence an exercise as far as how you can use that strength and that knowledge that you have to then drill down and uncover stocks. We talked about technology being up in the forefront as far as that candle glance view, where the strength is emanating from. So we, uh, AMD is, uh, Advanced Micro is a semiconductor stock. And of course, Microsoft is a software, a large cap technology stock. So these are both in those areas of strength. So this is where we want to go fishing, if you will, for lack of a better word. Apple was on Friday's list as well. So uh, let us go ahead and drill down by clicking on that ticker symbol. We are now introduced with a chart, but I've actually gone ahead and marked up because I was uh, utilizing Friday's highly active list. And then from there, uh, with an eye toward these stocks continuing to be quite active. So let me go ahead and pull up a chart here of Microsoft from uh, today. And again, we can see this is that action last week. Last week, it hit the, the most active list uh, at least two, perhaps three days last week. So now we have a sense that Microsoft is in a period of high activity and we want to be able to capitalize on that. Let's take a look at how we can use historical precedent to get a sense because each stock, uh, believe it or not, over my many, many years of for those of you not familiar, I have been uh, actively advising fund managers on the broader markets for over 25 years now. And in that, a lot of my work is reviewing hundreds, if not thousands of charts each week. And over time, you will see that stocks do tend to have what I call a personality. That is where they can undercut certain moving averages and recover. Other stocks have 
uh, obey. This is a 10 day simple moving average. Uh, for other stocks, it'll be the 21 day, but you wanna get a sense of how your stock trades so that you can uh, respond accordingly. So we're looking at a daily price chart of Microsoft. And we what I'm pointing out here is historically, Microsoft can recover after undercutting its 10 day shorter term, simple moving averages. So we're going back here to July, August, and September. In this daily price chart, the um, Microsoft did undercut this 10-day simple moving average, and it was able, and back here as well, but it was able to recover. So you want to use that information, for instance, during this super volatile period here in the beginning of May, it undercut. You may not necessarily want to throw the stock away because it does have a history of being able to recover from that undercut. You also want to pay attention to the outlying other indicators, in this case, the RSI. During that undercut phase, it was able to stay above that net neutral, which is positive. And then also the stochastics, while they were having these negative crossovers, they were above this zero net neutral, indicating that they were in positive territory during these undercutting periods. So that's what I mean by using historical precedent of a given stock to help guide you currently. So what I want to do now is go ahead and from here, take a look at a different view because when you are more actively trading, you're, you're trading the volatility in the markets, you will want to use shorter term stock uh, uh, time periods on your stock charts. So what we're looking at here is a intraday one hour price chart for Microsoft. And really you can see just how volatile this month of March was as the news headlines shifted on a regular basis. The stocks in general did actually uh, respond quite a bit. So this really would be quite difficult for an individual to trade this particular volatility. But I, so what I want it to do is take it down even further. Uh, and again, you, for those of you that are active traders, you may have noticed really just how, how volatile May was as a period of trading. So when we see extreme volatility, we're going to want to go drill down even further within this intraday realm, if you will. So now we're looking at a 15 minute price chart. So each bar here represents 15 minutes of trading activity. This is showing us not as much history because we're getting a lot more uh, in the way of bar charts. But take a look at how it, in essence, it smoothed out that highly volatile May period quite a bit. So again, these this is, would be for super active traders. What you are keying in on here is the price action as it moves below these simple moving averages in conjunction with a negative RSI and a negative trending MACD that would be negative. So we're looking at about a one day period here. Uh, Microsoft, as with a lot of other stocks in technology, really struggled here. But what we want to key in on here is last Tuesday's action when we saw a reversal, a downtrend reversal. So the way you're able to capture that is the price moves above these simple moving averages in conjunction with this RSI moving upward. And then your MACD having that black line up through the red, a positive crossover. And in fact, we can see that the stock has traded from 121 up to 131. So a about a 10% improvement that you were able to capitalize using these intraday charts. And that's that 15 minute. Let's go ahead back to the one hour and show you how you can capitalize this downtrend reversal on the one hour price chart. Very similar principle. We're taking you to June 4th. Price moves up above these simple moving averages in line with that RSI trending upward and your MACD trending upward as well. Uh, the uh, one hour price charts are going to get you in a little bit later than that earlier uh, 15 minute. But this is trying to uh, give you a sense of how you can use these charts and drill down uh, as far as utilizing those same principles with those key moving averages. And then also uh, 
the simple moving averages and the RSI and MACD. So let's go over to what is called the sector summary. And this again, you can access on that first page of stockcharts.com. So here we have a view of what is going on today, where the strength is today. So we can utilize the knowledge that we have as far as the broader markets, where the strength is in the markets, and then uncover potential candidates. So uh, consumer discretionary, let's take a quick peek at technology, which we did review in a bit. So semiconductor stocks. So let's go ahead over, take a quick view of the index. And here we can see semiconductors last week were up 6%. They did go into bear market territory with this steep decline here, but it does appear to be potentially reversing that downtrend. The RSI, this is a daily price chart is trending up above that net neutral and the MACD also trending upward in a positive fashion. So now we are informed that there is considerable strength here. They're up almost 3% again today within semiconductors. So what we want to do then is go ahead, drill down by clicking on that semiconductor and this is quite simply those that are outperforming. But we want to look at this scooter, the stock charts technical rating. And uh, we can see that a lot of these stocks that are really bouncing the most do appear to be lower rated technically. So maybe a bit of bottom bouncing. This is Amberella. Uh, we can see that a lot of these names that are turning. So for our work, what we can do is quite simply sort this by scooter. This is that technical rating so that the higher the number, the better. So here's AMD. This is a stock that I mentioned it would hit Friday's uh, up on volume list. It's up again today. Let's take a quick look and see because it is a little bit extended, no doubt about it. But what we want to do from here is go ahead and drill down into some of those shorter term one hour price charts. So this is taking us back to last Tuesday and so on. This is last Friday's action. And as long as the stock is finding support at these upward trending, simple moving averages, you are in good standing. We are certainly a bit extended. This is telling us the RSI that the stock is over bought, but by all accounts, it is very much in an uptrend. The signal of a reversal will come in this form with this RSI trending downward, similar to this, and the price breaks below these key simple moving averages. So this is what you want to be on the lookout for as a potential upside reversal. So hopefully I've been able to show you how to capitalize on this volatility using where the strength is. Uh, I mentioned that we would take a quick look at uh, defense related stocks and see if I probably have a nanosecond here, but using that sector sorting into industrials, what we can do is go ahead down into defense and aerospace. This has been a very vibrant area of the broader markets. Scooter again, we're looking at the technical rating and up here are your better performers. For those of you looking for more liquid stocks, we can take a look at uh, this particular Lockheed Martin and we can see that this stock after this gap up on earnings is very much in an uptrend. I am going to go ahead and leave it at that. But again, I urge you to take a look at last week's view at where we go into when you know those sell, sell signals, it's time to exit your stock. And then be sure and tune in next week with our guest, Dave Landry. And for those of you actively trading, good luck. The point of on trend is to keep you on the right side of the trend. Mostly dealing with stocks and ETFs, I'm going to point out bullish setups on stocks and ETFs that are in uptrends. I'm also going to look at some downtrends, but those are designed also to tell you which stocks and ETFs to stay away from. The main point is to stay on the right side of the trend, the uptrend.